First Chronicles chapter 19. Now it came to pass after this that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, they're of Lot, died. So their ruler dies. And his son reigned in his stead. Usual, usually the firstborn son. But, you know, his son takes over. And David said, I will show kindness unto Hanu, or Hanun, the son of Nahash. So we do get the name of the son. Because his father showed kindness to me. So here's the children of Ammon. They were kind to David. Their king dies. Son's in the leadership now. And David's returning favor for favor that he's got. And David sent messengers to comfort him concerning his father. So David probably sends the best men that he knows that's able to comfort. He's not going to send fools. He's not going to send military warriors. He's not going in battle. He's saying, listen, this man, he's very close to me. He helped me. His father's died. Do what you can to help him. Get over it. You know? Mention to comfort, comfort him concerning his father. So the servants of David came into the land of the children of Ammon to Hanan, Hanan, to comfort him. There's the purpose. Comforting. But, now but is a strong word in the Bible. It could be a good but or it could be a bad but. And it's a word that stands out. And you've got to read the rest. All right, is this going to be good? Or is this going to be horrible? Here it's going to be horrible. The princes of the children of Ammon said to Hanan, these are the people in authority of the royal kingdom, and we're going to see they're not so smart. These are going to be like the, the young men that are going to rise up and give Rehoboam counsel, which was terrible. Think us, that's the trouble they think. Thou that David does honor thy father, yes. And he has sent comforters unto thee, yes. Now here comes the lie, the rest of the earth. And not his servants come up to thee for to search, no. And to overthrow, no. And to spy out the land? No, it's wrong advice. It's totally wrong. It's totally a false report. Our liars. This is not the purpose. And David would not have sent mighty men. I mean, these are not warriors. These are men that they would comfort a saddened heart. They wouldn't be big, nasty, brute beasts like his soldiers would be. So here's a lie, and most lies will cause trouble. Wherefore Hanan took David's servants and shaved them. This guy doesn't inquire. He just listens to it for his, okay, this is the story of the coming of Rehoboam. There's no iniquity. I mean, there's no in inquiry. There's no asking. There's no searching. There's no examining these, these servants of David. Oh, okay, must be true. So he shaved them and cut off their garments in the mist, hard by their buttocks, and sent them away. So he has shamed them by, by shaving their beards and making them half undress, that their buttocks are probably seen. And he says, go away. And it's unusual story to the fact is that they do not have a change of clothes. To, all right, just change my clothes. Or they have no time to run back to the inn, hotel, wherever to gather clothes. They shave them. They cut their clothes. They're half naked. Get out of here. Go tell David what we've done. Based upon three lies. The servants are come to search, to overthrow, and spy the land. Three lies, and you're going to have a war coming up next. Then there were certain 
and told David how the men were, were served. Now, these are not the men that come to David. Someone comes to the presence of David, and David goes, yeah, well, how'd it go with him? I've got some bad news to tell you, David. And he tells him about these men being shaved and how they were mistreated. Told how the men were served, and he sent, David sent to meet them. For the men were greatly ashamed. Now remember, that beard was in the law. They were not to do things to that beard. They were to let it grow. Now they're shaved. And look, he sent to meet them. David comes to them. These men that have been made ashamed, and here comes the king. When was the last time the President of the United States visited every armed soldier who has been made a chain in a medical ward by losing arms, legs, feet, whatever, or, be, you know, been... Does he visit? David took time to visit his troops. David took time to visit his men. And these are not even warriors. These are just men of David's servants that, hey, go comfort him. Wow, that was bad. Let me go see them. They're in their shame. They are Jewish men who have had their beard sh shaven. And David says, let me go to them. And the king said, tarry at Jericho. That's a cursed city. That's a cursed city, if you remember correctly, with Joshua. He says, tarry here. Until your beards be grown. And then return. It's a shame for a Jewish person to not have a beard. That was in the law. So Jesus Christ would have had a beard. The Bible says they pulled his, his hair out of his face. And then some people turn, oh, it's not right to have a beard. You're just pity because you can't grow one. And when the children of Amon saw that they had made themselves odious, that's the first time that word shows up and only shows up in Proverbs 30, verse 22. That odious woman that gets married. It means to be hateful, offensive. Look how the word is used. Only two places in the Bible. David is angry at Amon. Those are the children of Amon. And then it says, Hanan and the children of Amon set a thousand times. David's not really mad at Hanan. He, he doesn't know who to be mad at. But it's a stink of an anger because of three lies. Thy servants came to search to overthrow and to spy out the land. David says, mount up, guys, we're going to war. How are countries when their soldiers are misrepresented or mis mistrusted or mis uh, put to shame? And we don't even know how many servants there were of David. We don't know if there was two or 20,000 billion. I mean, it says servants. It's plural. It's like the wise men. We don't know how many are there. But David went and visited them. David said, okay, fine. I see your faces are clean, clean shaven. I don't know if they're still wearing the same clothes. Maybe they are to show David. Look what they did. David said, okay, stay in Jericho till your beards come back. Next thing he does, he orders his troops. David defended not only the people of Israel, he defended his own people of Israel, his own servants. And in the children of Amon sent a thousand talents of silver to hire them, chariots and horsemen out of Mesopotamia. All right, so here's Hanan, here's Amon. David's angry with us. Mesopotamia gets on the red phone that they don't have. Yes. And Syria, yes. We need help. We need troops. We need chariots. We need horsemen. And we need them now. I'll give you a thousand talents of silver. So they, the children of David, hired 30 and 2,000 chariots. That's a lot. 32,000 chariots. And the king of Makkah and his people who came and pitched before the Mediba 
And the children of Ammon gathered themselves together from their cities and came to battle. So you got a UN assembly here of people against the Jewish person, and the Jewish people did not start this war. They came to comfort you. And because of three lies, to come to search, come to overthrow, and come to spy, you got these three forces of military against David and Israel. You remember what God said? I will curse them that curse you. They're, these people are not going to survive. According to what God told Abraham and what he told Jacob and the tribes of Israel and the descendants of the Hebrews, anybody curses you, they're done with. Somebody didn't explain that to Amon. You know what Amon should have done? He should have went over to David in his anger and said, David, let me, we got to get things right here. Those idiots, no, I take it back, not those idiots. I am guilty. I listened to a bunch of lies. I gave into a bunch of lies. What can I do to appease this? I offer you for, to give me a pardon. And that would say uh, uh, the, uh, the son, the, the king, Hannah, I'm guilty. I am truly guilty what I did to your men. But no, he goes out. And instead of sending money to the men that he did, he sends money to another army, to allies. So when David heard it, he sent Joab and all the hosts of the mighty men. Okay, now here's the battle. So the instigators here are Amon. We shaved these guys' beards off. We cut off half their clothes. We sent them away. We find out that David's angry with us. We are hiring more soldiers. We're hiring a military force to go against David. Now that David hears this, all right, now, Joab, captain of the host. That's in chapter 18, verse 15. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was over the host, the military. He calls in the, the military office of Israel. Joab? Yes, sir. We got a battle. All right. How much time you got? What time you need? How many you want? Where you want them? Where are we going? What's the order, sir? And the children of Ammon came out and put the battle in array before the gate of the city. Look at Ammon. They're doing the battle. They're the ones that are wrong. They could have just said, David, we're wrong. Before the gate of the city. And the kings that were come were by themselves in the field. Now when Joab saw the battle was set against him, before and behind, it's all around him. There are Ammon, Mesopotamiaites, and Syrians all around Joab. Because of three lies. Uh, what was it? He came to search, to overthrow, and to spy. Here we go. Ahath never even had to break down his wall of pride to step out and say, I'm guilty of this mess. And the rest of the people, wait, wait, battle was set against him before and, and behind and chose out all the choice of Israel. He's going through Israel saying, you come to battle, you come to, you stay behind. You come to battle, you come, you're definitely going to battle. The big, husky, strong, the warriors, you're going to battle. You, you stay by and make potatoes for us. It's going to be a big battle. And put them in array against the Syrians. Oh, look at that, Syrians. That's in today's news. And the rest of the people, the ones he didn't choose, I mean, you go, you, 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 or come with me. No, not you, not you, not you, not you. <clears throat> Definitely not you. You, you, you. The, re the ones he said, not you, not you, not you. These are the ones in this verse here. It's like, almost like, okay, let's say you got a basketball game. And Joab points all the big, tall fellows, that's my side. And all the shrimpy dinkies, that's your side. That's what he's doing. He's picking the best. The rest of the people, he delivered into the hand of Abishai, his brother. Remember, these are the relatives of David through his mother's sister, 
his cousins or something like that, Joab and Abishai. So now we have two armies. We have the army of the elite under Joab, and we have the army of Abishai, that, <laughs> not so elite. But he really loved his brother, didn't he? Joab. Abishai, these are your men. What, what? Compared to you, what you have? <laughs> oh, he's the captain. His brother. And they set themselves array against the Jordanian. For the three lives. For the three lives. And he said, this is Joab. If the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. We're great battle pads. We're going to win. But the problem is, if you see us failing, if you see us in trouble, you get over here and help me. But if the children aim and be too strong for thee, then I will help thee. All right. If you're losing the battle, if you're not doing so well, we'll come over and help you. Now look, now look at the battle plan, verse 12. Joab versus the Syrians, Abishai versus the children of Ammon. That's the battle plan. That nation for us, that nation for you. And if we if either of us are are, are failing, are falling, we're gonna help each other out. Be of good courage. And let us behave ourselves valiantly for our people. You know? We're representing Israel here. Let's not make us a name for ourselves that we don't inquire that name for the people of Israel. Let us be brave. Let us not be chicken-hearted. <laughs> be of courage. And for the cities of our God, Jerusalem and all the cities. And let the Lord, that's Jehovah, do that which is good in his sight. If we lose, we lose to the Lord. If we win, we win to the Lord. So Joab really doesn't have the idea they're going to win or lose. He tells Abishai, hey, if I need help, you better get over here and help me. Meaning, uh, I don't know. If you need help, we'll come over and help you. Meaning, uh, I don't know. And whatever the outcome of the Lord has for us, it will be the Lord whether we win or whether we lose. But let's be straight, let's be valiant, even if we lose. Great going, Joab. So Joab and the people that were with him drew nigh before the Syrians unto the battle. And they fled before him. <laughs> Boing, bye. Oh, what kind of battle was that? Here comes Joab. Ah! They turn around. We're out of here. And when the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians fled, where are they going? They likewise fled before Abishai, his brother. You got one nation divided in two, Joab and Abishai. Here they're coming into two nations. And the two nations, pew, they're, they're gone. They're, they're, they're getting out. They're fleeing. They got the white flag. Leave us alone. I want to go home. Because they searched, they overwhelmed through, and they wanted to spy out the land. What a battle! Israel's facing a bunch of cowards. And Syrians fled. They likewise fled before Abishai, his brother, and entered into the city. Then Joab came to Jerusalem. And when the Syrians saw that they were put to the worst before Israel, they're, listen, they're fleeing. Israel's killing them. It's a battle. It's a war. They sent messengers. Does that sound familiar? That's what started this chapter. And drew forth the, the Syrians that were beyond the river and Shabaka, Shabaka, the captain of the host of the Hadarezer went before them. And it was told David, and he gathered all Israel and passed over Jordan. All right, here comes David and his troops. We got three battles of troops now. We got David, we got Joab, we got Abishai. Dun, dun, dun. 
The Syrians are running, the Ammonites are running, and they're losing. And passed over to Jordan, and came upon them, and set the battle array against them. So when David had put the battle in array against the Syrians, they fought with him. Okay, now there's a battle. There's the king. Kill him. Let's get David. You know, this will happen at the end of the millennium. When Satan's loose, Satan will gather a vast army to fight against Jesus Christ, against his disciples, against his bride, against the children of Israel. God, you're gone. Bye. Simple as that. Has not David already been made king? And now yeah, here's the second advent. Here he comes into battle, crosses the Jordan. Now, it's the wrong cross in the Jordan. For Jesus will be west to east. David's going west. Oh, is that right? Yeah, David's going west to east. Jesus will go east to west across the Jordan River. A little back. Not all types go 100%. So when David had put the battle in Ray against the Syrians, they fought with him, David. They fled before Joab, they fled before Abishai, but David, but the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew of the Syrians 7,000 men, which fought in chariots, 40,000 footmen, and killed Shaphak, the captain of the host. 47,000 dead because of a lie that uh, they came to search, overthrow, and spy. 40,000 men were killed. Why are there wars? Why did God make war? God didn't have nothing to do with his war. It was based upon a lie. And how many wars throughout history, as far as man has had his first wars, I forget, Genesis, I forget where they had that war there with, with lots, lot was taken and Abraham gathered his own men and trained them up. But as far as that goes back, how many wars have there because of a lie? And though the Bible records one right here. All this king of Ammon had to do was come up and say, hey, you know what? I'm sorry. It got out of hand. But pride. It's not God. It's sin and pride. The big kid on the block is not going to apologize to the little kid on the block because that would make him look ridiculously stupid. So I'd rather go ahead and fight and you know end up with some bruises and cuts and stuff like that and rather just say, I'm sorry. You know, Satan will never tell God, I am sorry. Satan will never repent to God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ for all the misery he's caused since Genesis 3. Because he's a pride and he's a children, he's the, he's the captain, or I forget what it says, over the king of the children of pride. Forty-seven thousand men die because of one lie in three parts. I bet you there's a lot more of battles and conflicts over a lie. And when the servants of Hadarezer saw that they were put to the worst before Israel, curse them that curse you, they made peace with David and became his servants. Neither would the Syrians help the children of Ammon anymore. <laughs> we ain't going to fight. You got a problem with, with Israel? You handle it yourself, bud. As for us, we're going to make peace. We're going to do right. Notice some Gentiles will get in with David and do right. Notice some. Not all. When Jesus Christ comes back, when he divides the sheep from the goats, some Gentiles will get in. But not all. 